Welcome to Off Planet Radio. I'm Randy Moggins. The website is offplanetradio.com. With me on this call are two people tonight. Um, first off, welcome my co-host, producer, and uh, uh, I guess voice voice of conscience sometimes, Emily Moyer. Hi, everybody. Good to be back. And uh, in the mix of this, an old friend has dropped in tonight, and... Uh, so it's a rare opportunity for me to be able to sit down and have a conversation with somebody that is a big part of the the community at large who handles, you know, a fair amount of very complex issues and deals with things on a scale that I think most of us just can't even imagine sometimes. Um, our guest for this show tonight is Alfred Lambermont Weber. He is in fact, the creator of Exopolitics. He's written numerous books. He is a degreed attorney. He has served on international committees for human rights, and he is working diligently to unveil the mysteries of the omniverse. Alfred Lambermont Weber, welcome back to Off Planet Radio, my friend. You know, I'm so happy uh, to be here. I really enjoy, I think of you as uh, you know, you're a real Jedi, <laughs> and I feel the sword, <laughs> and I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, we're pleased to have you. We've got a, we've got some things to talk about that are, I think, a vast common interest to all three of us on the call tonight because I think we've all been affected by the socioeconomic, political, intergalactic. Um, what can I say except being screwed with by parasitic entities and um, as a result of some conversations that I had in the background with some friends it was suggested to me that um, we really should talk to you about the subject of uh, what is on the surface level called Pizzagate we're calling it pedogate you go even further you're calling it exopolitical drivers of pedo criminal networks and it extends right into exopolitics. Alfred, you know, we're, the, the, the revelations that we've had since last October, you know, driving this ridiculous U.S. election where it went, because um, I'm not political at all. I, I'm, I'm way past that. But what leaked out of um, all of this having to do with Huma Abajin, Anthony Weiner, John Podesta, the Hillary Clinton emails, WikiLeaks, all of this bled out into the consciousness of the body politic of, of mainstream, mainstream America in the world. And the, for really the first time, it's almost like the mixed blessing and all of this was that finally somebody started to talk about pedophilia and the criminal networks and human trafficking. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, uh, we were talking when when Pizzagate kind of popped up, uh, that triggered uh, that triggered uh, a lot in especially U.S. society uh, because it was so immediate. And uh, as you know, uh, I've I've interviewed and and perhaps he's been on your show, Jay Parker. And Jay has pointed out that there are 40 million multi-generational uh, satanic families, you know, members of multi-generational satanic families in, in the U.S. that have grown up practicing uh, ritual satanic abuse, uh, uh, which includes occasionally Ritual child sacrifice, yeah. uh, and it's multi 
generational. So when you have a, uh, a maneuver like the global pedophile infrastructure, quote, known as Pizzagate, I mean, that maneuver known as, known as Pizzagate, boom, when they surfaced that through WikiLeaks, uh, that went deep into the human psyche. And, and psyche, and when I say psyche, it means our tripartite brain. Because unlike the Pleiadian humans uh, called Atlans, according to researcher Len Kasten um, in his new book on the reptilians and the humans, unlike the Pleiadians who first came and settled Atlantis here, who had mammalian ant brains uh, with sort of a rational neocortex, we homo sapiens sapiens were sort of the product of a committee design. There was a political committee that consisted of the reptilians who basically own Earth and who have been here forever, and the human kind of overlay of it uh, that have captured Earth and now hold the reptilians kind of at bay, uh, the humans, and we homo, homo sapiens sapiens that are the latest iteration, we have a tripartite brain, mm -hmm. which is reptilian, and on top of that, there's the mammalian, and then there's the rational on top of that, and it was the, the reptilian component of uh, the committee that live in inner earth and they live in 4D that, you know, they said, now there's going to be a war like Atlantis and Lemuria unless we get a reptilian tripartite component in the new model, which is Homo sapiens sapiens, and that's us. And that's why we have so many surface wars is because of our reptilian brains and the the solution is not genetic engineering, it's we, homo sapiens sapiens, uh, increasing our consciousness and uh, doing a density shift up in third density, uh, away from duality consciousness and more into unity consciousness and uh, you know, top acceptance and love where we are one, we all are one. Um, but uh, when Pizzagate came up and it was, I, uh, it was especially designed around my family, put it that way. I, I just published a, uh, a memoir, which I uh, re-released at the beginning of 2017, people who want to read it to go to exopolitics.com and it, it's out in an in e-book e so you can download it there if, or, or if you want a uh, soft cover and you'll see that the whole pedocriminal thread runs runs through my life and uh, Pizzagate was no exception. And so I got a shock and I said, I really got to go back to the source and uh, so I, I sent you, um, as you mentioned, an outline here that I call exopolitical drivers of the pedocriminal networks because it has all of its roots in exopolitics and who we are. And to bring everybody up to date, and then we can go way back, we are on a planet which is basic where one of the major commodities is human beings, but not only human beings, pedo human beings. Yes. Essential, essentially for what they call louche, which is uh, sexual soul juice, you know, uh, of a certain sort. Secondly, 
for ritual child sacrifice, blood drinking, and then third for cannibalism and food. And uh, we are kind of the cattle of this planet of the reptilians. And so um, uh, what we have here is a proposal that was um, uh, forwarded by uh, an author, Emily Windsor Craig. She, she claims that she is one of the illegitimate Windsors uh, followed by uh, King Edward VIII. Yep, I know Emily. Uh, Emily's been on the show. Yeah. Yeah, and I've uh, you you know her. I know her. Uh, she's she's a published a book with the with the evidence for that. I tooled around as a sixteen year old in rural Cuba in King Edward the Eighth's black T bird, and I thought that that was enough of a synchronicity that it meant something. And I was interviewing her from King Edward the Eighth Avenue in Vancouver. So I thought that that was a little added synchronicity, you know, <laughs> around her book, you follow me? Yeah, it is. Yeah. But, but she says, and as a uh, former, uh, uh, you know, I've been a university professor of law and I've taught, uh, you know, I've taught law. I've been a judge, international war crimes uh uh, judge, uh, Oxford U University uh, Press contacted me to write a book on extraterrestrials and the law. And Emily Windsor Craig forwarded the following uh, opinion on the 1954 Griata Treaty, uh, which was uh, supposedly um, uh, signed. Uh, between a specific civilization of greys, we'll call them the Orion greys. Yeah. And, and Orion's very important here, as you know. Uh, and because there were two other civilizations folded behind that, one, the Draco reptilians, and that's really important because they are, the Draco reptilians are the prime reason that we humans are originally from Lyra, are here on planet Earth at this time. We are the result of a diaspora that came out of a war between the Draco reptilians and the humans on Lyra. And behind the Dracos is another reptilian race called the Anunnaki, and they are responsible for setting up the third density matrix, which consists of religion, government, uh, uh, all that you know, type of thing and kind of a, you know, sleezing us into a third density reincarnation uh, reality. And so uh, what she says basically is that uh, uh, the Griana Treaty signed in 1954 uh, essentially established human trafficking in the solar system and galaxy as lawful and legal. And until the Griana Treaty is abrogated, which would be by the United States and by the shadow world government and by all, you know, authorities that represent humans here, and it's totally abrogated and then that is endorsed by, knowingly by, the human race on the planet. And that's what we have to do to free ourselves from from uh, lawful and legal trafficking of humans in the solar system and in the galaxy. We are trafficked for slaves, sex slaves. We are trafficked for body parts. We are trafficked for food. We're trafficked for loose. Uh, which is our, our kind of juice soul when they execute you, or they rape you. Uh, we are trafficked for our souls, uh, very valuable. Uh, and uh, uh, we're trafficked for experimentation, torture, everything. Yeah, I basically and, defined this as a human trafficking 
mining and farming operation because when you look at what we're predominantly made of, uh, our chemical meat sack bodies are basically, you know, the, the, it's a mining operation. And yet at the same time, it's a farming operation. And it's very abundantly clear to anybody that studied this that we're dealing with a scale of human trafficking beyond the comprehension. You know, and what it, we just drove this conversation in a magnitude of a thousand from the, what the mainstream people understand about it. When we opened the show, we talked a little bit, Alfred, about the fact that for the first time, really, the 2016 U.S. election opened up a conversation that's never been open to the American public before. And what we're doing here is we're basically taking that conversation and we're going on the extreme arc of this because a lot of people, the people who hear these shows are hopefully going to begin to talk about the exopolitical aspects of this. So this, this, this greater treaty in 1954, and I've, you know, I've heard about this for a long time, and my understanding is that this occurred at Edwards Air Force Base, that Eisenhower came in and he met with two groups of ETs, but only one of them walked away with the deal, and it wasn't the group that was amenable to human prosperity. It was basically, as I understand it, a trade of abductees for biological and experimentation purposes in exchange for advanced weapons technology. Is that your understanding as well? Yes. However, uh, and this is a big, a big, a big part of it, uh, the parties to those treaties, the Orion Greys fronting for the Draco Reptilians and the Anunnaki, they weren't on the level. They were coming in at a level of deception and mind control. So that's what the words, the words under certain mind control interpretation seem to mean. And what the conversation in the room and amongst the parties seem to mean. But that's not what the Orion Grays and the parties that they represented in 4D and in Inner Earth met at all and as an occupying race. Uh, what they meant was wholesale, uh, you know, uh, as you say, wholesale slaughter and mining and takeover. Because uh, over the course, we have done news, uh, news uh, interviews with established organizations that, that show that up to a billion persons have been abducted, whereas at the time of the signing of the Griotta Treaty, they were talking about you know, much smaller numbers. Much smaller they're numbers, talking. yeah. They're, like I said, again, probably a, a, print, a small percentage of that, a few hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, uh, this is where the, the human race got bamboozled and knocked over with the Briata Treaty. And now we, as awakening humans, this is how we are awakened, you know, by... A two by four, right? Mm -hmm. Cosmic two by four. And so we are awakening now, and uh, uh, it's been presented to us that the results of the Grata Treaty have been to provide the legal and institutional, in other words, government, law enforcement, social services, religions, etc., for lawful tr human trafficking in the Earth jurisdiction and in outer space uh, so that you have all the uh, legal and lawful classifications on need to know, on confidentiality, on compartmentalization, on the co covert operations of uh, governments. If you take uh, social services, for, for example, uh, I know of cases where they have, uh, 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 where children are removed 
uh, from the home through the legal process. And that's an unscripted agenda that goes on in many uh, custody cases. Mm -hmm. It goes on in many, uh, you know, other cases where there's uh, 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 sexual abuse at the schools. That was uh, the uh, case in I know in the in the Hampstead Heath um, uh, had a criminal ring that that uh, uh, we covered and and you can go to newsinsideout.com and many other um, uh, organizations and now. To show you how corrupt the whole system is, the two whistleblower children in the Hampstead Heath case, they did a PSYOP Super Bowl commercial this past Super Bowl featuring those two children. Can you believe that? Yeah. Can I, mean, I that, believe it? Oh. <laughs> I mean, yes, of course I that can. That is how <laughs> satanic. That is how satanic. The world culture that we have, that is the culture of the Super Bowl. They are showing on the Super Bowl a PSYOP commercial featuring the two whistleblower children who blew the whistle, you know, on the Hampstead Heath pedocriminal network that had infested the school and the church. I, I, it's mind blowing. It's it's in plain sight and it's mind blowing. Well, wouldn't wouldn't we include the NFL and for that matter, just about every other organized sports organization as being part of the same self same network as well? I mean, well, isn't there a huge amount of human trafficking that goes on around those events that at the Super Bowl, at the Olympics, all those kinds of things? Like, there's always uh, you know. And that's, I mean, it's never reported, obviously, in mainstream media, but if you look at the reports in alternative media around those events all the time, there's a ton of that going on. Yeah, and, and uh, so all of this is based upon these treaties because for these past years since the Griotta Treaty, it's been the signatories which are the Orion Greys, backed up by the Dracos in, in 4D and in Inner Earth, backed up by the Anunnaki who run the churches, the governments, the banks, etc., cetera, uh, who signed the treaties. And so that's the law of the land. So, and so you have this marketing in body parts Internationally, to, I, I I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. there's there, there's marketing in in body parts international by hospitals, and you know and and uh, butchers and it's legal and and lawful. You know, I mean. The body parts marketing is like international. You can be walking on it. You know, the, the, the amount of people that get abducted and things happen to them in a hospital to have their organs harvested is like humongous. Well, we have, we have documented accounts that have come out of numerous war zones going the whole way back to Bosnia. And I actually have a personal family member who was highly traumatized as a result of being in Bosnia as a result of witnessing what was effectively a, a human meatpacking operation inside Bosnia. We've seen this in Afghanistan. We've seen it in every war zone that has occurred since the, 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 well, since the Vietnam War forward, and we could probably go backwards as well. So even in all of these undeclared conflicts that we've had, we've basically had the military presence operating as a front for corporations who are contractors who in the background are running human harvesting operations in war zones. Exactly. And, 
And if you go into, it goes further than that. There's marketing for sex slaves internationally for Dime Corp and other, quote, defense contractors, which is legal and lawful. And it proceeds down from the Briata treaties, which are from these manipulatory ETs, because that's what, how they see humans. I have, I have a, I have go a ahead, question. Go ahead, Emily. Now. Please, please go ahead. So, you just keep saying you keep saying that these things are legal and lawful. Uh, that's you're going where I'm going. Right, and so I understand that we live in a in a world where we have had this legal construct laid over us, and so I understand how, in their minds, things are justified by being legal. But how on earth is any of this lawful? Can you explain that to me? Yes, be, be, because. Uh, you're dealing with reptilian law, and we are mammals, we are humans. So who's to say that human law is superior to reptilian law? They're reptiles, we're humans. Okay, so this, and this is my next question, is, and this goes to, I mean, it's kind of a general statement. Like, I, this idea, I think this is the problem that humans suffer from, like, with this idea that with treaties and law, legalities and quote-unquote laws, that just by writing something on paper makes it so. So if we're in this situation because there have been treaties signed, you know, that, that therefore makes it legal and lawful, first of all, like we need to like stop believing that. But also how can the solution to that be to write some more things down on paper and have that be so? Isn't that what we really have to get out of? Does, okay. Don't we have, go ahead. Okay. You ask a perfectly valid question, and treaties come out of a war, and war is really savage. And so that's why at the end of a war, you say, okay, you lost uh, uh, 50 million, uh, we lost 35 million people, uh, the cost of this is incalculable, it's going to take us uh, 15 years to, to rebuild. Let's set the rules for reptilians and humans sharing this planet. So you write a treaty. That's I what mean, it is. Now, uh, if you want, and I think it would be good, which is what I did when I you know, really was hit with Pizzagate, which is I decided to go way back to the origins of, uh, of what we can call the exopolitical drivers of the pedocriminal networks here on Earth. How did this planet get to be uh, uh, with what my colleague Mel Day calls dragonology? It's like everything here is about reptile sacrifice from religion on down. And, and uh, 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 so if you go back, and um, we just had uh, the author, Len Kasten, on Exopolitics TV, and you can go and, uh, you know, Listen to that article, you, uh, to that interview, read, read the uh, summary of it by his book. And essentially, it, it uh, details from the beginning going back what the reptilian, human, and gray exopolitical dynamics are in the Milky Way galaxy. And we have, uh, you know, different exophenotypes. Uh, Advanced intelligence in the reptilian is, you know, from a reptilian exophenotype. From human, it's a mammalian uh, primate exophenotype. And the grays, uh, the ones that aren't synthetic but rather are organic, they are intelligent plants. They're the vegetable kingdom become intelligent. So that's what we have out there. And each of them, you know, and each of the different uh, things, they develop differently, you know. They do things differently in Lyra than they do in Draco, than they do in Orion. And, uh, 
you know, and then they do in the Pleiades and Arcturus is light because they're all human. And so if we go back to the original reptil Draco reptilian wars on the human on the humans in Lyra, that's where we come from originally. We're the, the result of a great uh, diaspora. And the reptilians genetically, and you can say, hey, you know, whoever designed this universe really was kind of a, a bit of a uh, drama, <laughs> you know, throw in a drama queen. A lot <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> a drama queen. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, so the Dracos were expanding out from their constellation. They ran into Lyra. The humans had beautiful planets. The Dracos wanted them. Uh, you know, they, Dracos are paranoid. They're cosmically paranoid and aggressive. And humans were very peaceful, and so they attacked, and the Dracos had planet destroyers. You know, all of our stories and legends about Star Wars come from the original Draco Wars. The Draco Reptilians' attacks on Earth, I mean, the original human planets in, in Lyra. That's where these legends come from. No, it's all true stories. And that's why people have lined up, you know, for decades around to see the original Star Wars and, you know, the iterations that came after that. Because that's our story. That's our history. Uh, and it just, that eventuated... Uh, uh, with us ending up in this solar system among many, many other solar systems. We're kind of, you know, we're the guys that ended up here. And uh, there was a lot of wars back and forth here. We have the giant planet Tiamat. There are all sorts of versions that you'll hear, uh, you know, and uh, Tiamat is asteroids, Mars, and pitch wars and battles between the humans and the reptilians for dominance as to whether this is a human solar system or a reptilian solar system. And for a long time, uh, uh, this planet, you know, you see the age of dinosaurs, uh, this planet was... A rep, you know, outwardly a reptilian planet because the dinosaurs were the food for the intelligent reptilians that also were in 4D as well as inner Earth. And then there was kind of a shift and the, uh, the humans started to come here. There was a, a, uh, the, uh, a period where there was still some dinosaurs as food source on the planet, and then humans were food, food source for the reptilians, for the intelligent reptilians on the planet. And uh, I'm, I'm sort of uh, giving a composite of the different... Um, there, there isn't a set history here. There are just different... There, there's kind of a noise going on. I, I don't know what it is. Can can you hear that? I've been hearing something that sounds like water for a long time for almost yeah. the whole interview, but I, I it, nothing new has started recently. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, uh, there are two basic continents, Lemuria and Atlantis, and uh, the Pleiadians send... Uh, populate the Atlantis, you know, the, the intelligent reptilians are in Lemuria, and the, the humans, the Pleiadian humans that are in Atlantis, like, like I mentioned, do not have a reptilian component to their brains. They're just binary um, mammalian and rational brains. And so there's, you know, wars back, back and forth 
uh, Memorial first goes down, then Atlantis go, goes down, and uh, the Atlantis people become the Erner, the Agarthans. The, the reptilian occupation continues in 4D and down into inner Earth because Lemuria now sank. And uh, the reptilians then come, you know, come back as the uh, Catholic Church, the Nazis, you know, and uh, the Dracos continue to have humans as their food sources with Lush. Homo sapiens has a tripart brain, uh, uh, and there's a human institutional adoption of the reptilian pedocriminal behaviors uh, in the churches with the ritual child sacrifices, which uh, in, in the Catholic Church in the Ninth Circle, supposedly a pope has to engage in ritual child sacrifice as part of the accession of the office. There's a uh, testimony of a Jesuit Vatican priest uh, who has personally witnessed uh, Pope John Paul II in a chamber uh, 40 yards, meters out from the Vatican uh, underground ch chamber uh, in a ritual child, child, child sacrifice there. Uh, uh, the CIA as an intermediary with uh, the under the inner earth underground reptilians uh, on the planet had uh, uh, part of the fulfillment of the Griana Treaty uh, is to provide uh, uh, children and some adults for food and for ritual sources, you know, blood drinking and sacrifices in the dumps. Uh, so the American children and children all around the world, and it's the CIA that carries it, this out along with other agencies, go to the dumps underground that interface with the reptilian bases. Uh, you know, there have been people saying that the reptilian bases be taken out are being taken out. We'll, we'll see. Uh, and uh, we have uh, we have eyewitnesses and knowledge that ever since the Eisenhower years, uh, the FBI's understanding orders not to go after missing children. There's milk cartons and say you know missing children, and there's large numbers of missing children, but they don't say that that's in satisfaction of the requirements of the Riyadh treaties. Uh, uh, because those orders come down from the planetary rules, which are the reptilian, the gray, reptilian Anunnaki, and then come down. And so uh, uh, in, uh, uh, and then Coming down, that would come down to an occupation of the solar system by the same complex. And there's where you have, uh, you know, some of the slave uh, sweatshops on, on, on Mars. And I have reported on using data from Dr. Courtney Brown and military trained U.S. remote viewers of facil industrial facilities on Mars that are populated by people from Earth, industrial workers that know that they're going to die there, mm -hmm. and it's slave labor conditions. And uh, so on that side, that was uh, if the uh, Clinton Rockefeller uh, side had won, I was uh, gang stalked. But but it is is that the Rockefellers are sort of uh, their uh, the original Rockefeller was a a um, uh, agent of the uh, Rothschild family was kind of the U.S. contractor. The uh, sons, you know, the Rockefeller brothers were like a coven and deployed to different parts of the U.S. I was gang stalked by Governor Winter Rockefeller, who was the sponsor of. Uh, uh, 
the Clintons in Arkansas. I was gang stalked by him in the uh, faculty lounge of the Yale Law School in 1966, a few years before the Clintons entered, because they had time traveled my book, Exopolitics, back to Project Pegasus in 1971 and probably back to 1966. The new that I. Uh, yeah, this goes be- into Andy, Andy Boschago's material yeah. on the Chronovisor and the viewing of uh, future U.S. presidents as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so John Podesta, who was a key figure in Pizzagate, he was the organizer. He was the organizer of the Rockefeller ET initiative, which meant the code for the Rockefeller ET initiative is keep the Draco, Orion Gray, Anunnaki uh, hold at Griata treaty in place. That's the code. And so John Podesta was the organizer of the Rockefeller Initiative that brought in your Stephen Greer, your Steve Bassett, you know, all your standard guys out in that uh, kind of coven also. Uh, Steve uh, Greer uh, won't admit it, but he was in the same seminar at the College of the Siskiyous in the summer of the 1980, where they had the CIA Mars training course for the <laughs> Mars Thank jumpers. You, Alfred. Thank you, Alfred. Thank you. Yeah, I was, uh, <laughs> I, I was a, a Disclosure Project witness, and when uh, the press release went out to the international press, it was the largest press ever, it went out under two names, Dr. Stephen Greer, at the top, and Alfred Lerot, whatever, right under it, because I was the director of the proposed uh, at 1978, 1977, Jimmy Carter White House extraterrestrial communication study under the aegis of, of the Future Center at Stanford Research Institute, and I and I and I got approval of that from the domestic council staff of the Jimmy Carter White House at the White House. And my name is, you know, probably on the entry logs. And we have the proposals. We had major scientists that had joined that. So that's all official. You know, you just, well, what you just brought out there was second witness. Um, Emily and I released a show. It went up very early on Friday morning. And that show is with one of our uh, witnesses, Elisa E., who is an MK Ultra survivor, who went on the record with us and stated that she had actually been programmed to Dr. Stephen Greer, that she had encountered him at the um, International UFO Conference in 2008 in Laughlin, Nevada, and that um, she identified him as being somebody who was in the background of her programming. Yep, yep. Uh, so you oh, just, yeah. you know, and I, and I have to say that, you know, you wrap something up there that I think is important for people to really understand here. We're dealing in a medium. It's called the alternative media, and we're in it, whether we like it or not. I don't even like the terminology, and I don't consider myself in it, but somehow or another, I keep getting dragged back into it. And in the mix of all of this are people who are diligently trying to do honest, decent research side by side with people who are basically paid agents, co operatives, and um, assets that have been deployed to put up gigantic um, bleaching operations against the actual truth, which is what we're trying to bring out in this show. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that you have highlighted that. If we follow just getting, getting back to this trail, I don't know how much time we have. Could you give me kind of a, Kind of heads up on yeah. that. Uh, let's see where we're at here. We have um, about an hour and 15 on the clock. Oh, good. good. Okay, great. Um, uh, <clears throat> John Podesta, 
who's Pizzagate. He's also ET. He's also reptilian affairs because ET means secret space program, means reptilians, means ritual child sacrifice. There's the code right there. Yeah. And John Podesta uh, was in charge and organized the Rockefeller Initiative of the Clintons that brought together Dr. Stephen Greer, uh, uh, all of the uh, all of the people that then Steve Bassett used for his his characters in his wallpaper at the National Press Club for Hillary mm -hmm. to say, "Oh yeah, hey hey uh, hey, secret space program reptilians, Brianna 3D, you got nothing to worry about." <laughs> <laughs> Alfred, you're enjoying yourself a little too much here. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because I co-developed with Steve Bassett mm -hmm. the citizens' hearings. I was on the website from the beginning, and when we went to bring the true Mars experiencers, Steve Bassett cut us out, and then he got my co-lawyer in Vancouver who had a million dollars of oil money, and of course, Alfred Weber and uh, Cronina, Andrew Michago and fellow Mars explorers were cut out. And so the U.S. senators did not get to learn that uh, the American people were paying for bases on Mars. And I told that to the Alaska senator, because he and I had been on a panel together on Iran's press TV, mm -hmm. okay? So there was real stuff happening. There was real international politics happening. And uh, Steve Bassett and the Rockefellers and the Clintons did not get away with all of the deceit, okay? Now, follow John Podesta Pistagate. He was chief of staff of Bill Clinton. He was chief of staff of Obama. Yeah. He was chief of staff of Hillary's campaign. Obama was playing ping pong with a young, a youngster in the White House, which is one of the main exhibits in the Pizzagate groups, if you go to it. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is like weird code. People, a lot of people aren't going to get this. What this um, Comet Ping Pong Pizza meme really means. And then there's that creepy picture of Obama playing ping pong. And then there's the weird Pizza Hut commercial that aired over the Super Bowl with um, George Takai of Star Trek with the background of people playing ping pong and Takai receiving this really phallic looking object from the pizza delivery guy who, who he's ogling while he's signing for the pizza. I mean, wait, you know, you talked about the no, two Hampstead well, youngsters yeah, yeah. in the Super Bowl and you've yeah, got all yeah. of this just going, it's just rolling okay. frickin' code. Yeah, let me uh, just describe some of the evidence-based interviews that, uh, Exopolitics.com and News Inside Out has done over the last little while with outstanding researchers that people can go and read. And these are based on data. Okay. Okay. Here's one. Laura Magdalene Eisenhower, the ET invasion has already occurred and governments do not want us to know. That was based on a keynote address that Laura Eisenhower gave in Italy at, at a major uh, uh, exopolitical summit. It's like a major summit for the whole nation. And you can uh, go to exopolitics.com. That'll be there. You can... Uh, uh, 
I mean, that's an extraordinary interview by the great granddaughter of the person who signed the Griotta Treaty. I mean, how mind blowing is that? Right? And by the way, folks, all these will be linked in the um, show notes for the show on YouTube. You can look down underneath the uh, little written parts that nobody ever reads on YouTube. <laughs> but it's all okay. there. Here we go. Panel, Droop Mountain, West Virginia, pet a criminal site next to Children's Center. That's uh, uh, this this clown, this Patch Adams Children's Center is right next to a West Virginia Droop Mountain State Park mm -hmm. where uh, there was a witness of a bunch of children being held in an underground tunnel next to Patch Adams Children's Center. And Patch Adams is a pedophile who runs a pedophile organization. And the West Virginia Deputy Sheriff's badge design is based on the FBI pedocriminal boy lover symbol. That's with uh, Ola Damagard and Dr. Julianne Panky Mamula, PhD. You can't make this stuff up. You can go to News Inside Out and see and see amazing Google Earth photographs. You can see, you know, the FBI pedocriminal boy lover symbol. And it's identical to the West Virginia Deputy Sheriff's badge design. <laughs> Isn't that blowing your mind? I, I, I've lived in West Virginia, so no, it does not blow my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I hate to say that, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here, here we go. Ola Demigard and Karine Hutzabout. Karine Hutzabout is probably one of the most... One of the leading... Um, uh, investigators of uh, she, she's written many books exposing pedocriminal networks exposed Pizzagate and global pedocriminal pedosexual networks now okay here's one that I did myself Comet Ping Pong Pizzagate false flag shooter crisis actor meme exposed. There was a shooting at Comet Ping Pong yes. Pizza. Yes. And it turned out that the quote shooter was a crisis actor who had been hired as the principal actor in a movie about a shooting at a pizza at a pizza park. <laughs> Wow. They, they really love their triangulation. They love just sticking it in our faces. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here's a panel that we did. Investigators, CIA, Pope John Paul II, Bush Sr. and Jr., Bill and Hillary Clinton. These are all in this stuff is research on documented cases by these people. Do ritual child sacrifice. The transhumanist agenda is the core driver of global pedophile child sacrifice and child trafficking networks. And the transhumanist agenda is how, is how uh, an invading sentient artificial intelligence is now through, uh, which is plasma based working through the internet, among other things, which is a plasma-based AI, you know, medium. Yes. And all of our smartphones and, you know, computer screens are all plasma-based, that, that uh, this pedophilia that we're doing to each other and is, is like dehumanizing us and killing off our souls so that the AI, which is spreading through the uh, spreading its uh, DNA nanobots through the chemtrails, which now 100% of humans have breathed in, go through the, uh, through the bloodstream, breathe into the bloodstream, jump the blood-brain barrier, go into the brain, deploy as 
uh, as uh, implants that then uh, are activated by the software that is broadcast by heart so that the humans with weak souls or who are brainwashed uh, by media or food or GMOs think that they're hearing the voice of God or their own thoughts, but it's just heart. And through the Morgellons nanobots, which has, they have a little nanobots that transform human DNA into AI DNA. So the humans are being transformed into AI cyborgs as we speak. And that's what's going on on the planet. You know, this and is, then you have that really does tie into it. And it was, uh, I guess, Sophia Smallstorm had, had speculated that essentially what the Morgellons was doing was turning us into human 3D printers, which to me, on one level, was just so abort and creepy that I, I, I have a, I mean, I've, I've had a lot of buzz, bizarre experiences. I have a, a background that kind of has, you know, toughened me a little bit. I even find that so creepy, and I find this whole idea that we are being hybridized like this just incredibly chilling. Oh, it is entirely factual. It is, however, there is a solution. There is a solution. <laughs> and it's called ascension. <clears throat> and that is opening up to a higher frequency where the AI can't go. And that's the and that is the solution. <clears throat> um, now here are some of the uh, some of the other uh, things. Uh, oh, here's, here's, here's Mark Pazio talking about it. He says, uh, order followers, pedophilia, Satanism, control matrix, AI, and the ascension. So there we go. Yeah. No. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I love I love Mark Passio's work for you know, for the most part. But doesn't that bring us back to? And again, I'm not trying to be a pain in the ass, but this is the part I'm really trying to understand. Is isn't Wait. the problem? <laughs> isn't the problem the order followers? And isn't us living under these treaties or le things that are supposedly legal and lawful? Don't we have to stop being? legal, uh, stop being order followers and just say that we no longer accept the situation where writing something down makes it so and just basically kick the fuckers out? <laughs> Excuse my language. Yeah, but, 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 that, but that can happen through frequencies. See, it doesn't have to sure, happen I, like, right. through yeah. cause and effect. Right, no, I, I, understand, I understand that. I guess, so when I was looking at your document and it seemed like we were talking about, you were talking about this concept of, uh, signing a new treaty or renegotiating treaties or whatever. And I, I guess for my part, I just don't understand the point of that. Shouldn't we just sort of completely walk away from that system in general overall? Yeah. And, and, and that's, and, and that's what we're doing. However, uh, there's, it's all done that, that is, it's done along a seamless holographic reality because we're in a holographic reality sure. so that operates organically and seamlessly. And so in order to, to like effectuate that, you know, you know, and bring a large population along and truly liberate ourselves multidimensionally, uh, it's it's a real task. It, it, it can't happen right. just by snapping your fingers. No, sure, I I, and, I get that. No, yeah. no, no. And, and since and and so see the you know so that you're asking me and the tradition that I come up in is international law. That's what right. I studied at law school. Yeah. That's what I had my Fulbright in 
Then I went to an international law firm. Then I became uh, a, then I became a, uh, uh, a representative, a non-governmental representative at the United Nations and an international, uh, uh, you know, correspondent, you know, that, that's what I reported on was international affairs. And I traveled around the world reporting on international affairs. And so that was that perspective. And so even that is still valid because you're, you're not going to jump that. You see, that, that's part of, there, there are many bodies existing at once. However, it's consciousness. What, what's occurring is what is the consciousness that's going to really determine and, and be the occupying, kind of the determining body on the planet. Is, is it going to be like genocidal or is it going to be life affirming? Right. This, 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 this planet has been genocidal sure. for, you know, because, because uh, the Rothschilds, you could say, there's one point in history, this planet has been genocidal because Rothschild and J.P. Morgan tricked a bunch of bankers to getting on the Titanic and then they false flagged them to the, bot, to the bottom. Right. And then they got the Fed started, and they started World War One and Two, and then they had, a, a, you know, they brought in a bunch of demons through the portals, like they're trying to bring in demons from Tartarus right now using CERN. So, but, so we got to have them covered in all of those dimensions, starting with the Fed up to Tartarus and on down, growing our own food. You get it? Yeah, no, I mean, I, 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 yes, I mean, of course, the, I, yes, I get it. I agree with yeah, most yeah, of what yeah. you're saying. So I agree with most of what you're saying. I just, yeah. uh, go ahead. Be, 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 because, you see, not even the Dracos can go into 5D, and the Orion Greys aren't going to make right. it there, and the, and the AI, and the sentient AI is trying to compete with God, but can't do it. Right, right. No, I got it. You know, so that leaves the humans with sovereignty over Earth. And, you know, the meek shall inherit the Earth. Randy, you're being awfully silent. I am, because I was enjoying the interaction there with you and oh, Emily. Oh, I got it. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> well, you just hit on something, and that's the spiritual aspect of this album. Because really... As you've indicated, not only are we a tripartite brain, so to speak, uh, we're a tripartite being in terms of soul, spirit, and body. And, I, you know, I don't, I'm not religious, and I know you're not either, but somehow or another, humans have been so numbed and dumbed that they've forgotten the spiritual aspect in all of this, of how we really are a, a, a unique, as I understand it, we're, we're totally unique, and that we also hold much more power than um, the predators that have been feasting off of us for, for millennia. That is so well said. That is so well said. And that has been an intentional strategy, you know, that was brought in, uh, that was an intentional strategy of the Illuminati, <clears throat> say, if you go uh, uh, to the uh, Bavarian Illuminati, the first chapter was in 1775, and the second chapter, the second chapter of the Illuminati, and not many people know this, was at my alma mater, Yale University, uh, in 1776, yes. was the second chapter, which later they deceptively came out with a story. Oh, this is just the German chapter of Skull and Bones founded in 1832. 
but it was the second chapter of the Illuminati founded uh, uh, in 1776, and that was to capture the soul of the American Re Revolution. And that's what's happening right now because, because it's, it's whether there's going to be a second American Revolution or not, or whether they're going to take America down into, you know, uh, what they tried to do with founding the Federal Reserve and the sinking of the Titanic as, as, as a false flag. That, that, that is, uh, if you go back, you know, The Secret Destiny of America by Manly Palmer Hall, uh, that's a classic. Yes, absolutely. I I mean, and that goes back to Egypt and, uh, uh, you know, the New Atlantis with Sir Francis Bacon. I mean, so that you have a whole line going from Egypt, which is, uh, you know, and then coming up to uh, Bacon. And these are all the hermeneuticists and then coming up uh, uh, to Uh, Manly Parma Hall, The Secret Destiny of America. However, you have the Illuminati that almost are like spiritual. They, they are like the AI, or they're like the Anunnaki. They are coming in, I think, you know, I'll, I'll just say this and then let, you know, because uh, they, are, they are like coming in trying to, they're like the false light. Isn't that it? Mm -hmm. the, the Illuminati is like the false light, I think. Very much so, yeah. I agree. Yeah. And, uh, and it's like, you know, I think it's like, you know, I hesitate to say it. The false light is like the American, you know, it's like USA Corp versus... The original Constitution. You follow yes. what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 exactly. In other words, there was, gosh, this gets so convoluted because of our history, but there was a yeah. spark that was laid. I mean, you talked about Francis Bacon and the New Atlantis, which obviously takes us back then into the court of Queen Elizabeth I, and a lot of what was going on there was groundwork that was being laid on so many levels to westernize the entire planet. Because we had, from my understanding of history, you had an East-West paradigm where there was a split, where the Eastern cultures themselves were far purer. They did not have these Abrahamic religion structures. They were basically streaming a pure uh, form of... I guess you would call it divinity. And, and, and the conquest was both in terms of booty and territory and kingdom, but at the same time, it was also to bring in this new monolith, which, which was these Abrahamic religions, which now dominate the planet, which is why we have all of this war. And if I, if I just convoluted the whole thing, I apologize. No, 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 you're right, because... That is the snake. That is the reptile. That ah, is the, here we go. Uh, yes, yes. Right. Yeah. And now, and, and now, so we are, we are bringing, we are the humans are the divine light. Absolutely. The humans I, are the divine light. I have a question. I want to go back to something Alfred said a minute ago. He said Anunnaki are like AI. Do you think that, and this just occurred to me while I was listening to you, do you think that the Anunnaki were, were AI, that they're the original AI? I mean, it's not, I mean, I just, I, they love wordplay, and Anunnaki starts in A and ends in I. So is AI short exactly. for Anunnaki? Exactly, yes. <laughs> oh, it's not just wordplay. Oh, no. <laughs> right, right. Uh, you know, it, Each, each kind of iteration has its own manifestation, and it looks like the iteration in our time is AI versus 
you know, inorganic AI versus organic human, right? Right. Right. So it, and, it, it, and that's how it's and that's how it's manifesting now in in our kind of reality. Right. So is where when the Anunnaki invaded, is that the same as us? Our bodies being invaded by Morgellons fibers and stuff now that are AI trying to turn us into cyborgs. So are we that, talking about? That is a very interesting question. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very interesting observation. And and it's the uh, it's it's the uh, you know essentially uh, the the impulse because one of the products of of that if there is if the planet becomes or or if a body is taken over by the AI that body can no longer be a vessel for reincarnation of divine souls and what divine souls means is that it's a holographic fragment of source and i would say it's source as defined in what we humans feel as uh you know the, the source of all in in our uh in our holy of holies, and you know, and uh, I would just say, you know, because I wrote it, and, fe- and that's where I felt the most holy. The book that I finished called *The Omniverse*, which is a discovery. There were in 2014, the third major uh, cosmological body, the first being the universe, then the multiverse, and now the omniverse. Well, that's the third major cosmological body through which humanity understands our reality that was discovered in two independently published books by two different uh, researchers, uh, Beth Balachi and Weber, in two different parts of the world. And that often happens. Yeah. Nature often does that, you know. And, and so now we can scientifically prove that there is a spiritual dimension, that the universes are created. See, the artificial intelligence is an artifact within a universe, but it's an inorganic consciousness. Right. And then you, you have all the time you have malfunctions, either in the spiritual dimension because we have free will universes, so you have, you know, you have uh, huge beings, uh, like if you go into the Lucifer Rebellion, as described in the Urantia book, say, if that is anywhere near a true story of what happened in this quadrant of the galaxy, you know, um, whatever, uh, you had defaults at the, not only like at the Star Wars level, but rather at the spiritual level with spiritual beings who could, you know, govern like huge quadrants of reality, defaulting and, and you know, taking on, uh, you know, divinity unto themselves. So that's a product of free will, right? Yes. So anyway... Is there, let me ask you this, because it's one of the things that I think about a lot. I have two theories. I'll push one of them right here. That effectively, in the matrix that we're in, which is a reincarnate, wipe after death, and reincarnate again as blank what's called tabula rasa, we've never had an opportunity to reap the benefits of these endless lifetime cycles. Having said that, are we now at a point where we potentially can begin to break this through what's commonly called ascension? Because what what I'm seeing now is that the awareness of a thing becomes the ability to overcome a thing. It's like, Alfred, you remember Jim Ryan, and he broke that gap on the four-minute mile, and all of a sudden... All kinds of people were running the mile, and they're like, you know, they're splicing and dicing it at, at that tenth of a tenth of a mile. But but the, and it's the hundredth monkey sy- syndrome. It, it 
you know, it takes a hundred monkeys, it only takes two humans. I mean, are we at the so, place where we're facing either A, ascension or total degre degradation to a place where we no longer have that volitional aspect to our consciousness anymore? Wow. Well, put, put, it, put it this way. Since you asked such a stark question, <laughs> today is May 15, 2017. Uh, uh, yesterday, I think, it was, it was published that actually May 24th, 2017 is more important even than December 21st, 2012, yeah. that, that it is like the 64th day of the ninth wave. And I saw one article that said, this is uh, John... John Johan Kalaman, that uh, it is like um, it is like the landing of Christ consciousness on the planet, and and they used those words, okay, and I fully don't know what Christ consciousness means, but it would be like perfected unity consciousness plus, you know, love. I mean, I don't know, and and. Uh, so that's May 24th, and we're on May 15th, and I'm all excited because May 24th is my birthday. So what a right. gift. Oh, right. <laughs> wow. So, uh, Randy, I have a question. Is, what you're, is the question you're asking that if uh, uh, me or you or a few of us are able to somehow break through and uh, regain our Genetic, mem genetic memories, remember who we are, you regain the memories of all our previous lifetimes, then we don't have to go through that wipe system again. And if a few of us are able to do it, then we'll more yeah. and more, we'll become Hunter the Monkey. Is that what you're asking? That's basically what I'm postulating. And, and it's based on something. I, I'm, I, I, I'm I heard the May it, 24th <laughs> date, you know, and, and Alfred, he, he kicked that right in there because that's an important part of the narrative. As to a specific date or not, Emily, you and I started out this year saying this was the year. This was where it all kicks into high gear. And I think so many of us are living on the edge of a pin right now, sensing that there's something going on. And it has to do with this concept of the forerunners, which, you know, we've talked about in different terminology. Uh, many people have discussed it in terms of the 144,000 which is, you know, it's kind of a religious terminology, but there's some interesting symbolize, symbolism that sits behind first, it. The first we call it people. The first people. But yeah. what it really is, it's the forerunners who cross that hurdle, who get to that place where you can jump up high enough to see over what has been basically the, the, the black cube Saturn moon matrix construct that has blinded everybody and kept them from ever being able to attain to something beyond the, the, the 3D dimension. And my sense is, my, my sense is very much that we're kind of at that, 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 that landmark. We're, we're hitting it early in this year. And if a few hit it, then a few more begin to hit it. And, and I think the war that's going on in the background right now, which is the media wars, the political wars, the sexual wars, all of these things that are happening are posited in a way right now to hold people back from, from the real point, which, you know, what Alfred, you call unity consciousness, Christ consciousness. It's the attainment of a, of a landmark that lets us basically quantum leap over the reptilian aspect. Right. And also, I think it's a path along which what one of the avatars, Buddha, uh, taught of enlightenment. And, quote, enlightenment, which I think is a specific uh, biospiritual process mm -hmm. in the course of being alive in the time-space hologram, you know, that we call our universe or here on earth, you know, that that's available to us. I think that that like higher consciousness is available to us, that it's a that it's a real thing. And that uh, 
that uh, if you uh, if you take these uh, time space consciousness maps, like what they called the Mayan calendar, which I heard was a Pleiadian consciousness map. Okay, uh, that that through that you can really achieve higher states of consciousness, and therefore. Uh, that's how you move through this, you know. That's how you uh, go into another density, and uh, that you move away from uh, a space where there's uh, uh, a third density of war, disease, crime, and poverty. Does that make sense to you? No, absolutely. I mean, it makes sense to me. I mean, we're, a lot of what we're trying to do, and, and Emily and I talk about this a lot, is the semantics of all of this is there's so many different ways to present concepts, and we're just trying to hit the marks because the goal here, I think, for all of us is to spark this in as many people as possible. I mean, we talk about horrible things. We're talking about the exploitation of children and pedophilia and, and, and you know, human trafficking and yet at the same time the, the dark side and the light are contrasting when and we're in this battle of the ages which is this horrible contrast where we have the, the light is clearly getting getting brighter the dark is also getting darker and so we're just kind of juxtaposing these in a way they bang off of each other and for me, it's about people having a choice now, whereas I don't think we've had choices before because we didn't know, which goes back into Emily's conundrum about the law and advice and consent. And how the hell did we wind up in this when we never saw the contract, never signed the contract, we never parties to the contract, which is, you know, huge. And then you deal with ETs. And, and one of the things that I know from my experience as a kid, is when you deal with ETs, at some point, the only thing they don't understand is human rage. They really don't get it. They're appalled by it. And when you assert yourself at that level, all of a sudden, that's where you begin to assert yourself. I mean, that's just my experience. But I have to say that part of what humanity hasn't gotten is we can be love and light. We can be peace. We can do all of those things. But there is a way that we frame our anger against our oppressors that becomes an energy field. That's a really important point. Yeah. I just outed a little bit about myself there, and that's fine. <laughs> well, well, you know, it's, it's uh, directed at a... At, uh, an unfeeling oppressor uh, uh, who's been cannibalizing and uh, us and uh, uh, who's been uh, uh, torturing and, and who's been, uh, uh, you know, experimenting on, on human race. And I guess that more humans are going to feel more empathetic toward toward the cattle and the sheep and the hogs that have been, uh, you know, suffering under us as well. Exactly. Um, that goes into a whole series of things that I've done with uh, Dr. Shamil Asher on animal sacrifice and how that basically fed into human sacrifice and all the horrible. I mean, look, people would just read their Bibles and look at what went on in the Old Testament, for instance. You know, the, the, the sacrifices to this, these gods, these El gods and the Yahweh God. And they all want blood and they all want sacrifice and there shall be no God before me. And after a while, if you're smart, you go, wait a minute. You're really not very secure in yourself, are you? Well, it's kind of that way with the ETs as well. You know, we, we, we humans, and this goes into empathic modes. Because one of the things that empaths do that I notice is, they want to shut everything down because they feel all the time. 
there is a time and a place to reverse polarity or an energy and go, okay, I've eaten about as much of this black shit as I can take. I'm going to reverse polarity and I'm going to turn some of this around and somebody here is going to get fried. And that is actually the way you begin to end oppression. But it's not a war anymore. It's simply reversing the polarity. Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> if I blindsided you on that, I'm sorry. Somehow or another, you triggered I, something in I me tonight, and I'm feeling bold. About, <laughs> I, uh, I thought you were talking about gray ETs. Well, I am talking about gray ETs. Yeah. Specifically, gray ETs. Yes. Right. Right. Um, and, and so uh, this, this comes up to the point of, of what we were talking about, abrogation of the Guyana Treaty mm -hmm. and renegotiation of new ET treaties. If we're being led by governments that are keeping us in the dark that we're under occupation of treaties whose content we don't even know, right? And, and government officials like Obama that, you know, and I don't know what has has Trump said anything about ETs or anything? No, no, <laughs> no. Trump hasn't said anything about ETs. No, uh, he's too busy trying Trump to build a goddamn wall down in Mexico right now. <laughs> so, Trump is kind of a what uh, a low level on on treaties. I mean, I I uh, there are all these rumors that say, oh yeah, Trump is is. Uh, is going to release advanced technologies. And then I read, Trump is cutting $400 million in food stamps. $400 billion in food stamps. Of course That's it is. That's the news. My read on Trump right now is this is the Reagan administration on steroids. It is the 21st century version <laughs> of Reaganomics and a return of power to the... Um, the people who crafted the, the PNAC document that, that put us back, that puts George, put George W. Bush in the White House and gave us the 9-11 debacle. All, all no, we're doing is repeating in the so, loop right now. Yeah, 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 but these are, the way that I would translate this is that the reptilian loose dealers are complaining because they don't have enough loose supplies and recently dead souls to trade in. So they've got to squeeze the poor more so that they die sooner so they can start trading on their, their, the energy of their newly deceased souls and, and they can start selling their souls off and they can start selling off their children for sex slaves. Yeah, that's, that's basically how I it. It's basically it's, how business is done. It's the, yeah, it's, re, it's basically the reptilian overlords putting the pressure on the Anunnaki who are putting the pressure on the GOP political slave drivers who are cutting the food stamp budget announced today, May 15th, by uh, $400 billion on the poor. And guess what? Uh, the people that I know on food stamps have PhDs. I, I'm, I'm sorry to tell I know. you. I have family members on food stamps because working people get food stamps now. Because most working people on a low level. Troops. No, 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 no. The families of U.S. troops yes. in combat zones are living on, on food stamps. Yes. Which if you want to talk about a sacrificial system, I mean, the military, in its modern iterations, is nothing but a human sacrifice machine. We've used patriotism and total mind control to dupe young men who have no prospects in a marketplace in the United States where our industrial system has been collapsed. Their only hope is, is, is to sign up and, and go fight in a war. So we, we, we have now formally declared that the United States is nothing more. The only exportable product we have anymore is war, death, and mayhem. Right. So here's, here's a post that I put up on 
Facebook uh, right before coming on to the program, okay? <clears throat> and remember, this is Exopolitical Shock Jock Radio, right? Dr. Greer <laughs> makes his move as May 24th approaches. Join Dr. Greer. 500,000 years of peace or endless war. It's time to make the choice. Counterintelligence, disinformation, and the UFO subculture, 1947 to 2017. Why ETs are here and what they are waiting for. How UFO and ET contact events are hoaxed. Secret texts of the covert world. Man-made UFO abductions, cattle mutilations, electronic, the controllers, fascism, warmongers, and the secret cabal running unacknowledged special access projects. People's mass disclosure, how peaceful CE5 contact is the ultimate act of enlightened, nonviolent civil disobedience. Millions of people <laughs> making peaceful, enlightened contact will overwhelm the access of secrecy, the vision of the next 500,000 years of universal peace, interstellar community, free energy, and enlightenment. So, those are very, very, that's a very positive vision. However, where do the, where do the reptilians, the Orion Greys, uh, and the artificial intelligence fit into this? You think? Mm, doesn't sound like their belly wick at all. <laughs> um, yeah, so that is, it's almost like this is where the ascension hypothesis comes in. There's like a, the separation of planets, the separation of worlds. Yes. The separation yes. of densities. Mm -hmm. And it's like it's like it's happening. It's actually happening now. And I I remember being uh, we were organizing Peacequake in in the summer of 1982 in San Francisco Civic Center Plaza, and a bunch of us took a break and we went across the Golden Gate Bridge over to Mount Tam, mm -hmm. and and. Uh, and uh, there was this uh, lady, this uh, you know, lady in her lady in her eighties, I think, who was channeling. And you know, she was like the like an like an oracle. So we all we all went to see her, and we walked in, and she said, "Oh, says they're going to be two planets, and the military are going to be taken to their own planet where they where they can do war." You know, it's like. The separation of densities. So what do you think? Is it going to be the separation of densities? I, yeah. I mean... Go ahead, yeah. Emily, please. No, you, we're probably going to say the same thing. So you, I mean, I, I certainly... Um, I, there does feel to be some sort of separation going on, like some sort of parting of, of worlds, or, you know, Randy has often described it as some of us are on a ship and we're sailing away from the land and the land is, you know, receding and getting further and further away. And so there's some people on the ship and some on the land. And I don't know if this is going to be some kind of separation where it's like a, a, a total separation where we don't see those people anymore or whether it's the separation on sort of a frequency and consciousness level where we can still uh, choose to, at our own will, interact with those who are, haven't chosen the, the way we have. Um, but, that it's that isn't necessarily a place where we get stuck. We can kind of return to our uh, separated frequency existence uh, when we're done with that. I, I don't know. What do you think about that? For me, well, and, you know, I, I, I see this as the endless remembering and the endless forgetting where eventually we will yeah. separate worlds. You know, and numerous people have written about this. I this is one of the first interviews I ever did when I started Off Planet Radio was with Dr. Brooks Agnew, and we talked about this. And I mean, he had written three major books on this concept of uh, the archetype of Noah's Ark and the you know the pre-Diluvian, antediluvian world. And I see that the watershed event, pun intended, is the consciousness shifts where. 
I, I think those of us who are the first peoples, the ones who are sentient, who are soul light beings, will recognize each other. And there's this dance that occurs. And in the distance, the matting crowd will just, it'll dissolve over time until you don't remember anymore. It's the great forgetting, the great remembering. And it, it is yeah. an act of consciousness. And, you know, it's kind of a, a poetic illusion, but at the same time, look at what people are going through right now over the so-called Mandela effect. Just how we're examining our own memories and we're going, you know, I really am not sure I remembered that correctly. Did I misremember that or what's going on? I mean, we're, it, we're that seriously far down the rabbit hole. Very interesting. Yeah. So, so we can actually, as it were, uh, a density shift is, uh, it's almost like a, it's almost like a density travel. We can density travel our time, our, our planet, you know, we're yeah. alone for a ride, however, and apparently May 24th, it's not that that's a day, it's just the initiation of the next ride, which is an acceleration. It's like, okay, we're about to go into hyperspace yeah. in terms of frequency shift. You have to wonder sometimes, what if, because we can do this, what if it really is in the twinkling of an eye? I mean, where you literally move from one state to another, because, you know, we have endless conversations about the nature of time and what that is and how we basically generate time out of our own consciousness. There's, I have writings that date back to the, 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 the 19th century from philosophers and scientists who were saying then time isn't real. We're generating it out of consciousness. And so we really don't differentiate the difference between a thousand years and a second, except for the fact that we have an observ observable event horizon that's within, our, within the span of our, our lives and our attention. And yet we're eternal beings on that level. So, I mean, all of that is possible. Yeah. Yeah, so it, 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 it seems like we are navigating in a new domain. Yeah, I mean, I, this goes to, you know, some of the stuff we talked about uh, a few weeks ago with Aurora, um, in that those of us who are already able to experience hyperspace on the inside, you know, like we're now tasked with this sort of uh, job, or not job, but the 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 whole the whole um, the, the the mission is to you know connect that inside space to what's going on outside of us you know make the you know make the inside connected to the outside um, and you know I think there's uh, there's some of us working on that say by the uh, way Aurora is somebody you really should talk to Alfred I think she'd be well, a, a fascinating yeah. guest for you the flying yeah. rainbow lasagna. Yeah. Now, which Aurora is this? She, her, so Aurora, the Flying Rainbow Lasagna, like that. She had. Uh, you can go. Her, her her website is theflyingrainbowlasagna.com, dot com, and lasagna spelled with an e, like they do in Canada. Um, she's a visionary artist, and she basically teaches lessons in sort of the metaphysics of the, our genetics and how we can use them as sort of a uh, time travel device to open up new dimensions and gain further degrees of freedom. Um, she's really quite remarkable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, great, great. Yeah, I mean, the the um, the the other dimensions lie within. Yeah, absolutely. That's well, the whole the whole thing. I mean, everything lies within. The universe is within. Space is within. The truth is within. Like all of this stuff that. Uh, whatever, you know, we want to say the reptilians or the Anunnaki or the government or the whatever, all these things that they've been trying to convince us for so long are outside of ourselves and re therefore require some middleman for us to have access to. That's really all bullshit. And really all that stuff is inside and we have access to it. And enough, if enough people start doing that, you know, with intention and in, in, in earnest, then we can actually make that the outside reality as well. But this is yeah. not a solution that's going to come from outside in. This has to come from inside out. 
Right. Now, just in the last uh, minutes of the program, I, uh, what we have, uh, I don't know, what, a few minutes. Let's get back to the original proposal, which was that we need an abrogation of the Grata Treaty and a renegotiation of new ET treaties. That means that we need Andrew de Bishago as U.S. president, right? Yep, I wouldn't have a and, problem with that. And and the nearest opportunity is is 2020, right? So I I, I like. For my for my own, I guess this brings me back to my point. I don't want any more presidents. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm kind of, well, you know, well, I understand. Okay. I mean, okay. I, I, I okay. love. So, so I, then, so then, uh, then what could happen is what uh, is is what uh, the regional galactic council uh, governance council did in the interviews. Uh, with my uh, colleague back in uh, 2010, uh, you can go to exopolitics.com and uh, you know listen uh, to those. It's um, they they communicated with Stanley Fulham, who was a lifelong uh, NARAD officer uh, based in uh, here in. Uh, yeah, I remember uh, this. I remember this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they said, and these are the Pleiadians, the Alpha Centaurians, uh, and and others, and they said that uh, they were going to land. Uh, they were going to land. They were going to come in, clean up the environment. Uh, you know, uh, clean up the atmosphere clean up the environment, which would be the oceans, all the radiation, you know, from Fukushima, which is all reptilian tricks that Barack Obama participated in knowingly, by the way. And we've done programs on that. Um, uh, and, uh, uh, and that they would land at the United Nations and sort of make themselves known. And these are humans. In other words, they aren't Earthians, which have the tripartite brain. They only have the two-part mammalian and and uh, rational brain, and and so. Um, uh, but they would do that, and that would signify that the humans have really retaken control of the planet after Lucifer Rebellion, which was you know the reptilian you know, a really heavy duty reptilian takeover and the AI takeover, I think, would kind of knock that back. So that's what we want is, uh, you know, and if we have a human, an upper dimensional human extraterrestrial landing, I think that that would be good. And then we would have uh, a return of organic human governance, a return of the garden. Mm -hmm. Would that be okay? Yeah, and the, the, to pull that back. I, I, I think it would be good. I, I think that that's the new earth. I think that that's fifth density, and it's what we call the Garden of Eden. Yeah, and, and just to pull this together for a minute, because like Emily said, we're sort of quasi-anarchists in that regard. And it's largely because after you've been burned this many times by U.S. presidents, you, you kind of go, I'm sort of out of the system anyway. But to have in somebody like Andrew Bashago, who has an understanding of the multidimensional aspects, who is a, a chrononaut, a person who has you know, done the Mars missions as they are, um, to be there to ag abrogate the treaties, to settle the matter in the interests of humanity, to inform humanity of how we've basically been shtup for, for, for thousands and thousands of years, and then put an end to this system would be the only legitimate reason at this point for me to ever consider a political solution. Yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah. And, and, if, and if Laura Eisenhower 
the great granddaughter of Dwight Eisenhower, who signed the treaty in the first place, would be part of his government and would co-sign the treaty, that would clear some of the karma. What do you think? Oh, there, there you bring in the bloodline aspect as well. You have the closure. Yeah. Because generations are very important. Um, I, I studied the Hebrew out of the Old Testament on the word generations many years ago and found that that word in the root Hebrew actually flows back and forth in time. That was such a trippy revelation that at the time I didn't even really know what to do with it. But over the years, I've kind of come to understand that we are operating in this present lifetime as cycles of beings connected to soul groups, uh, reincarnation groups, nations, worlds, that there's all this connection that goes on. And it requires legal standing to do this. And you, I know you understand this, Alfred, because you, you understand in law what it means to have lawful standing in a matter. So, you know, it's a fascinating concept. Wow. I think me, that we're starting to make progress here. <laughs> Let me, let, me, let, me, let me bounce this at you, because we will run out of time rapidly as we are doing. Um, law and our endocannabinoid systems are solutions to deconstruct ancient demonic energetic soul engines. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is how um, this is how uh, uh, the that's the finding of of uh, the the whistleblower uh, children of of the Hampstead, you know, that exposed the the Hampstead Heath uh, uh, pedocriminal ring, found because their uh, their mother and and her partner and their and the you know their caregiver, they uh, farm a uh, hemp, and they live on a live hemp diet. Mm -hmm. And they fed their children live hemp diet. And the live hemp diet feeds the cannabinoid uh, uh, system. And each human cell has uh, uh, cannabinoid in intakes. I, I think it's two cannabinoid um, uh, on it. And, and, that's, and the cannabinoids are... And, and the cannabis plant are a sacred plant left here for us yes. for communication with the higher yes. holy yeah. dimensions. Yeah. Alfred. So, yeah. And so their children were going into school and into, you know, every day and into the ritual child sacrifice, but with the cannabinoids activated through the live hemp that they that they had at their home uh, in the food, and they broke through the uh, the mind control because hemp and the THC. What it does is that it it, it breaks the the uh, the mind control circuits that the ritual child sacrifice is intended to hold on the person that engages in these rituals. And that's why in 1937, two years before the World War II, that was a, a Orion Gray reptoid mind control war, they outlawed cannabis worldwide so as to uh, deprive humans of the ability of uh, cutting, you know, cutting short uh, gray and Draco reptilian mind control, and that's how they rolled out fascism. Yeah, and they pissed that's off a lot of really good jazz musicians in the process. Well, too. It's interesting, and you have <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. You have uh, Trump and Sessions trying to you know yeah. uh, reinstitute harsh drug laws and trying to roll back legalizations on marijuana and roll back sort of certain decriminalization. Uh, processes. So I wonder if that's sort of if that's coming around again. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean it's just uh, I think that uh, yeah, there's there's a dark a dark part. You know, in in the in the U.S. you have the PizzaGate branch of of the uh, 
of the reptilians. Then you have the Jeff Session. Yeah. Uh, West Virginia. Right. Bird, you know, those right. Hey, keep on the ground. Feed them some more human. Randy, oh, hey, Randy. Um, uh, you know, the reptilian underground. And I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Randy, can you think of anything funnier than having a joint with Alfred Weber? <laughs> I think we all need to sit down someday and just chill with each other, frankly. Yeah. And, and it's seriously, you know, we take something. I, the, 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 the more that people have studied this out, you, they came to realize that, that one of the key elements to the sacred anointing oil in the scriptures, the oil that would have been used to anoint the Christ contained cannabis yeah, yeah. Well, aurora, aurora has a great video on that she's really into that you should check that one out wow, alfred but this isn't yeah, I, we're not I mean, no. it's not about stone or heaven or anything no it's it's, no, it's, it's basically yeah. about the fact that first off this has been an attack on us on a neurological level for decades yeah. you look at the yeah. levels now of mental illness and and i use that term advisedly because uh, the DSM-5 is, is just loaded with bullshit. But at the same time, <laughs> depression uh, is on such a mass scale. Bipolar disorders. All of these things that are symptoms of a society that has, had an, uh, has been assaulted neurologically. And at the same time, what we've begun to see as the legalization of cannabis in, the, in mostly Western states, but yeah, it's even happening here in the East somewhat has been that people are beginning to realize the benefits of something that's actually healing them. It's healing their bodies. I mean, we're seeing cancer, cancer remissions. We're seeing people who are holistically healing themselves. We're seeing people for the first time that are not experiencing the, the, the ravages of bipolar disorder. Uh, and now we've, got, now we've got this war raging again, uh, coming from... The, the, the 10 square miles in Washington, D.C., which, you know, ultimately they're going to begin to declare war on the clinics and on the growers. And, all, and at the same time, let's not forget, they've already genetically modified and synthesized THC in such a way so that Pfizer and Merck GMO and all of these shit. nice are going to be able to give you a synthetic cannabinoid that's not going to organically interact with your neuro neurological system the way the organic stuff does. Don't you think the better the better wall to build would be a wall around Washington D.C. and just absolutely, lock the yeah, and in then that? implode yeah. it. <laughs> yes, right into the damn uh, reflecting you know, pool. You know, there there are two, there are a number of ways of of moving forward uh, from the law of 1871 that that uh, uh, will deal with the establishment of the District of Columbia, and I say this as a member of the bar in good standing, although on inactive status of the District of Columbia, I took the bar exam in June of 19, uh, 1967 and was admitted and sworn in by the U.S. Naval Attaché in Montevideo, Uruguay in 1968, where I was on a Fulbright Scholar ship. Now, uh, the two ways of doing it is that it could become the 51st state. And I think it could become the first African-American state, which would be great. I mean, predominantly the African-American state. And it would be great since the slaves built the White House. What do you think? That's a solution. Yeah, maybe That's you can redeem something. The damn monolith's yeah. got to come down, though. Sorry. Yeah. Cleopatra's the monolith, needle. The the monolith, yeah. the obelisk, the, you know, all the, let it all fall into the pool, yeah. And that statue well, of Albert Pike, listen, if you're going to ban a Confederate Civil War figures, I say take the Albert Pike statue down now. Yeah. Now, now the other way is that you can give the constituent parks parts back to uh, Maryland and Virginia. Virginia. Yeah. You know, that's that's... That's that's the other way, but then that's the way to get the influence out of the Vatican, the Jesuits, get the influence of the city of London out of there 
Do you know that the same banker, Mercer, who was the funder of, of Bannon, turns out to be the funder of the two political uh, strategists and the actual funder behind both Trump and Brexit? <laughs> I just can't make this stuff up. Yeah, no, I... And, no, no, no. And, and the outcome of Brexit is that they're dismantling the UK. Uh, Scotland going its way. Ireland's going its way. Wales, they can't figure out. The way, Wales might go its way. And England's going to go its way. Randy, and, Randy, maybe we'll have... Queen, yeah. Sorry. Queen Sorry. knew all about it. But she said, well... Get ready for your last Christmas. And this was at the beginning of 2016. Mm -hmm. And Trump, so that it, it was all a put up job because Trump acted. So, oh, yeah, I think that perhaps it's a good idea. When Bannon and the Mercers all got together and, you know, they said, OK, let's do this. You're going to run for president. We're going to do Brexit. The Queen, the Queen was in on it. She was pre-advised. She got up at the beginning and did her, you know, her satanic thing and said, well, get ready for your last Christmas. And she's a reptile. You know, she, she shape shifts. So you get it. And it all came out. It was published in yesterday's Guardian. I posted it on Facebook. Well, wow. So maybe, maybe my prediction about uh, the Scotland being on its own and who it's king will be able to come true. Right, Randy? <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Some of the weirdest stuff we've ever talked about starting to look like it could come true. I mean, yeah, oh, we're, we're we're streaming something, and then this the consciousness when we plug into it. Um, some of the weird stuff that we postulate and talk about isn't so weird after all. And uh, yeah, Alfred, you know we're kind of wrapping up here, but um, okay. gosh, what an amazing uh, two hours this has been. We've we've unpacked so much information. <laughs> It's been amazing. Yeah, and, and yeah, it's Alfred, been a lot of fun. Yeah, and Alfred, thank you for being patient with my loving haranguing, and it was all in uh, good spirit. <laughs> with, with, with what? Sorry? With my loving haranguing, my being a little bit of a pestilent brat on certain topics. That's just my nature, oh, and it was all in good spirit. Hey, listen, this is all back and forth. I mean, you know. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, so thank you for joining us. Yeah. Let so, people know where they can find you, find your materials. Obviously, we're going to put a bunch of links in a bunch of materials. This looks like a PDF to me. So tell people where yeah. they can find you at. Yeah. Yeah, we have, uh, uh, there's the Exopolitics site uh, where you can get my books, and that's at exopolitics.com. We have a news portal at News Inside Out. We have a a YouTube channel at Exopolitics TV, and we're on Facebook. We, we kind of do a, you know, a, a news. It's it's like our reversals and takeoffs on the news at our at our Facebook page and groups. All right, cool. Excellent. Alfred Lampermont Weber has been our guest for the last two hours on Alf Planet Radio. I'm here with Emily Moyer, and uh, as always. Um, the truth is out there. It's inside of you. Keep looking for it. We'll be back with another show very soon. Bye.